Okay, so with free agency continuing to roll on, the Eagles have continued to make headlines as Nick Sirianni and Howie Roseman just spoke for the first time since the Birds' major free agency moves and both revealed little details about their plans for the new guys and what they hope they can bring to the team. Plus, Nick Sirianni compared the signing of Saquon Barkley to the addition of A.J. Brown a couple years ago, while Howie Roseman discussed the cornerback position and specifically James Bradbury, and his comments make it seem like the Birds actually could be planning on bringing him back next year. Plus, Howie Roseman also revealed that the Eagles aren't done making moves in free agency yet, so I'm to talk about all that and so much more news as free agency continues on and we won't waste any time let's get straight into it all right so let's start off with an update on the eagles 2024 opener in brazil as it was reported that the friday night international matchup rumored to be against the cleveland browns will be exclusively aired on peacock which at first that was a real scare for eagles fans like myself who don't have peacock but rest assured if you're in the philly area you can still watch the game on tv as the league rules make it so that the games must be broadcasted to the local markets of the teams playing so again eagles fans you can still They'll watch the game without having Peacock, but this just shows how the NFL is catering to and moving towards streaming services more and more. But now switching from that over to some more big organizational news, the Eagles just lost Howie Roseman's right-hand man in Jake Rosenberg, which was originally reported by Jeff McClain, and John Clark then elaborated saying, quote, the Eagles are losing a key member of their front office who worked very closely with GM Howie Roseman. Jake Rosenberg tells Jeff McClain that he is leaving the Eagles to pursue growth in the NFL, and he would like to be a general manager. Jake has been very important working on the salary cap and helping to structure contracts in a way that really helped the Eagles. So good luck to him, I guess, but for the Eagles, this honestly kind of sucks. Because like Clark said, he was very, very important for the Eagles in terms of structuring contracts and working on the salary cap, which is obviously an area that the Eagles have been elite at in large part because of him. So not having him is going to be a big loss for sure, but However, I'm still sure that they'll be fine. Howie Roseman certainly at this point knows what he's doing with the cap and structuring contracts. It hasn't just been Jake doing all of that. Howie surely has been a huge part of that too, so he's going to be fine. But again, it does just stink to lose Jake, who has been a big piece of the front office for years. And speaking of losses, one former Eagles starter that has been with the team for the past four years is now also officially gone. As the heavily criticized Quez Watkins has decided to switch teams in Pennsylvania, as he just signed with the Steelers on a one-year deal. And for a lot of Eagles fans, this wasn't exactly sad news. I mean, Quez was a guy who I think we all once rooted for. He was really pretty good in 2021, in all honesty, and we thought we had a guy that had a lot of potential. I mean, I personally remember making a video calling him the Eagles' most underrated player that was set to break out, I think, ahead of the 2022 season, but of course, that didn't happen, and from there, he kind of just disappointed. In 2022, he came up small in the biggest moments, including the Super Bowl, with that being the most notable one, as he dropped a great ball from Jalen Hurts that, if caught, would have really helped the Eagles' chances in winning that game, and then in 2023, in what was supposed to be his revenge tour, he didn't really do anything, so it was clear it was time for both sides to move on, and they did, as Watkins is now a stealer and the Birds have to find a new wide receiver three, which, to be fair, I mean, Watkins really lost that job early this past year. But the Eagles can now look to either one of their new free agent signings at wide receiver to maybe fill that void at the wide receiver three spot, or they could sign somebody else or even draft somebody like a lot of people want. So I guess we'll see what happens. Regardless of that, Quez is gone, so good luck to him. It just sucks that it didn't work out here, but it is what it is, I guess. And that's kind of how I feel about the NFL's new rule changes as well, which includes the massive change to the kickoffs as they will now look like this, which I'm not going to lie, I understand why they did it considering nobody was really returning kickoffs anymore, and I feel like this actually does add some excitement back to kickoff, so I honestly really don't mind it, but I know some people do have their gripes with it, so you can let me know how you feel down in the comments. Now moving on to the other rule change, which is definitely a lot more controversial, we gotta talk about the banning of the hip drop tackle, which, I mean, I know that most people, including myself, really don't agree with this because, like, I know we're trying to keep players safe and everything, but banning this kind of tackle just isn't it in my mind because it's not something that players are always intending to do. I mean, they're really just trying to get the offensive player down in any way possible, and when you got a beast of a man like Derrick Henry about to run right by you how are you supposed to not tackle him this way I mean it's just kind of a hard ask for a defensive player and also I mean just again how are you consciously supposed to avoid tackling in a very very specific way when the game is just moving at such a high speed I mean I don't know I think this is kind of stupid and bad for the league and tons of players agree including our own Darius Slay who said quote it's about to be a lot of missed tackles but you know what, at least that's a good thing for the birds on the offensive side of the ball, because they of course obviously just went out and invested at the running back position, bringing in Saquon Barkley, who's a guy that's already great at running through contact, so now that there's no hip drop tackle, bringing him down just got a whole lot more difficult, so that's definitely exciting, and speaking of which, Saquon continues to say just how excited he is to be an Eagle, and he recently went on Jason Kelsey's podcast to reiterate that, while also recruiting Kelsey for a return. I'm like a kid in the candy store, I'm happy, I got a fresh start, I, I can't wait to meet everybody and just 
just go out there and play ball. Dude, it's going to be so fun to watch. It's going to be so fun to be a part of. It's going to be great. You don't got to watch it, you know. I mean, you got to love that. And look, we know that Kelsey is not coming back to play, despite how bad he may want to. But just if he did, I mean, could you imagine Saquon running behind Jason for a big play? That would just be awesome to watch. And I mean, we can dream, right? But again, it was just awesome to hear Saquon recruiting Kelsey like that. And speaking of Saquon, we got a ton more news regarding him as Nick Sirianni and Howie Roseman have been at the annual owners meetings and they got a chance to speak for the first time since free agency began and since they started making all these big moves including the Saquon signing and how he explained why they decided to bring him in despite it surprising a lot of people as of course we all know that the narrative has been that the Eagles and Howie don't like to pay running backs but they obviously did that here with Saquon so it was cool to hear Howie break down the whole situation as he said that he believes the notion that the Eagles don't pay running backs is overblown citing the fact that they paid Brian Westbrook and LaShawn McCoy when Howie was in the front office and he also said that it's really just about finding the right guy to pay that amount of money at that position and he believes that Saquon is that guy saying quote we think Saquon's a special player a special person and when you're trying to find those guys they're hard to find especially on the open market and then you put in the dynamic about have we gone so far has the pendulum swung so far at this position the guy touched the ball 300 times a year hopefully there are not a lot of other players skill position players that are touching the ball that many times and have that effect and that's really a very true statement. I mean, guys like Saquon are very hard to find, and Barkley's going to be a workhorse for the birds and a difference maker for them when he's on the field. So as long as he stays healthy, it's hard to argue the decision to pay him. And Nick Sirianni also seems really excited about the move as he compared it to the A.J. Brown trade just a few years ago. Yeah, amazing thing. Good players fit well into, into schemes, and uh, he's obviously a really good player. We're really excited to have him. The, the, the style of play that he brings, um, the leadership that he brings, um, and so, however, you know, guys like that, however you, you use them, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna do a good job. And so we're, we're obviously working on the ways that we're gonna, we're gonna use them now. Our offensive staff's working hard at that, and just really excited to have him have add a, a player of his caliber to our to our team. You know, a couple years ago when we added AJ, <clears throat> just did a lot of work of hey, what does AJ do well? You know, obviously you do that going in, then you then you even look at it even more as you after you get him. What does AJ do well? How can we use him? And it's been a similar process here uh, with Saquon. Look, Sirianni as well as Kellen Moore and the rest of the coaching staff just know they're getting a weapon in Saquon, and now it's just about making sure that they use him correctly within the new offense that they're building together, as of course, we know that Nick is working with new offensive coordinator Kellen Moore to create a more creative and dynamic offense that doesn't have the same issues as last year. And speaking of which, owner Jeffrey Lurie also just spoke to the media on Tuesday, and if you've been following the birds, you know about a meeting between Nick Sirianni and Lurie following the year, where it was Nick's job to pitch his plan to fix the issues from the collapse, and just his overall plans for the future and it was heavily speculated and rumored that if Lurie didn't agree with those plans then Nick would have been fired but obviously he's still here because Lurie liked what Sirianni said and he had the chance to explain what he liked most about Nick's plans for the future and specifically Sirianni's willingness to make big changes. Yeah very very proactive I mean the the things with Nick I I have to say were really impressive were an, a, wanting to truly improve the ingredients of the offense um, truly improve who was going to lead in terms of leading the offense and the direction it would go. Um, uh, wanted to be much more innovative, much more um, dynamic. Um, of course, bring the things that brought us a lot of success, but very open to uh, finding the best possible offensive coordinator. Um, and the same with defensive coordinator. I mean, it's uh, he's an offensive head coach more but he recognized that uh, Vic Fangio would be somebody that would be an outstanding defensive coordinator for us. I'm encouraged by Nick's support of Kellen because Nick really brought Kellen um, into the picture of who we should hire was his first choice. And uh, he thinks Kellen will transform our offense into something that's uh, more unpredictable and more dynamic and, um, um, you know, in, in, a, in a great way. Look, I know the large majority of the Eagles fan base doesn't exactly love Nick Sirianni right now, but you at least gotta commend him for his willingness to make some big changes to the offense to try and really transform it and fix the issues from last year, as well as just trying to get a good leader on defense at the defensive coordinator position. And speaking of the defense, Nick and Howie also got to speak about some of those additions with the most notable comments coming about the addition of CJ Gardner Johnson and what they hope he brings back to the defense with his mentality and toughness being cited as something that was very, very valuable for them in 2022 and something that will be valuable 
valuable for them moving forward. I mean, Howie Roseman said that he was hoping to bring in players to fix the mentality and swagger of the defense, saying, quote, we were looking to regain our swagger and mentality back, and obviously what happened at the end of last year didn't feel good and wasn't acceptable for any of us. And so we wanted to get players who can kind of bring that and have that motivation and that mentality. And if you know anything about CJGJ, that describes him perfectly. And Sirianni knows this, as he said this about the CJGJ signing and his and the team's overall toughness. I think the word toughness is just the is the word that we we just that you want. We were looking to add tough pieces, and when you go back and look at uh, Chauncey of the the things that he added when when he was here in 22, you know, you saw a guy that was willing to throw his body around um, and play physically tough, and I just, you know, and play mentally tough too. Like those, there's two pieces of toughness: the physical toughness and the mental toughness. Um, you know, he whether he had a good play, whether he had a bad play, he was playing his butt off the next play um, with a, with amazing effort, and and some of the physical plays that he made too. I'm really excited about the toughness that that Chauncey brings brings back, and the he plays with constant energy, and that's contagious. Like physical play is like you know it's um it's it just brings that ju it's like the alley-oop right it's like it's like a big three-pointer whatever whatever sport you want to compare it to um the energy that it brings to the sideline in your team and the momentum that it builds so excited about his his toughness that he adds and the excitement he plays with um you know and um looking forward to him adding that to the the piece of the defense Look, I think we all know about the toughness both physically and mentally that CJ brings, and when they initially signed him, that was one of the things that I thought was most important and I was also most excited about, and I really do think that it's going to have a nice positive effect on the whole defense and secondary. And the secondary specifically really could use it after what we watched from that group last year because it was just not good enough, neither at safety or at cornerback. And cornerback is kind of a really interesting position, honestly, for the Eagles right now because they have a lot of really intriguing young and unproven players at that position, as well as some proven veterans, and they still of course have to figure out what they want to do with James Bradbury and whether he's going to be back or not. So amidst all that, Howie Roseman actually talked about the cornerback position as a whole, saying that he and the organization are still high on Darius Slay and think that he played well last year, while he also talked about the excitement that they have regarding several of the younger guys, but his most interesting comments came when he talked about James Bradbury. As he said, quote, It's obvious to everyone that Bradbury didn't have the year that he was expecting and that we were expecting. I think obviously he understands that and is driven to show that he's the player he was in 2022. I don't know, to me, that honestly sounds like Howie is kind of trying to prepare the fans for the possibility that JB is back for 2024. Which, I mean, to be fair, he's not going to come out and say that they're planning to get rid of him or anything like that. That would just be dumb, but the Eagles do have money invested in to Bradbury and he was an all pro just two years ago so maybe they still want to roll into the season with him starting at cornerback opposite Darius Slay which honestly I really don't want them to do that but I guess we'll see what happens these comments don't mean that they're definitely gonna keep JB but at the same time it does sound like Howie again is preparing the fan base for that possibility and in doing that he's expressing confidence in Bradbury but even if Howie and the birds don't end up replacing him it's still clear that they're not done making moves I mean if you know one thing about Howie Roseman it's that he doesn't ever stop making additions to the roster no matter how how late in the offseason it is, and he confirmed that the birds aren't done by saying, quote, we are not done yet. We're always looking and working and trying to improve our roster. We have a lot of work ahead of us, and we're looking forward to preparing for a big NFL draft weekend. So, I mean, no surprise here. I'm expecting some exciting things once the draft rolls around, and definitely some more notable free agency moves. I mean, there are still some big names out there. Justin Simmons, obviously, is the most notable one that everyone wants to talk about, so we'll pay attention to that and everything else going on in free agency moving forward. And of course, I'm going to be covering it all right here on this channel, so if you don't want to miss any of that make sure you subscribe and also really really importantly turn on notifications and also while you're at it make sure you drop a like to show some support and leave a comment down below just regarding anything that i talked about in this video and if you want to watch another eagles video going over a potential trade that they could make for a cornerback as well as a big update on the whole hassan reddick situation you can check this out right here and now with all that being said that's pretty much all i got for this one guys so thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video